All right. On today's episode, uh, this podcast number five with Kenny Sanders. What's going on, man? What's up, man? I'm excited to be here. So, you know, we're just going to jump right into a little bit of your background. Uh, I've I've known you now for, I don't know, a year and a half, two years or something like that, just online. We met online through Introverts R Us. Yeah. Um, so clearly we're going to have a lot of overlap, a lot, lot to talk about there. But for people who don't know you um, through Introverts R Us or otherwise, can you just, I don't know, whatever you want to talk about your, your background, whether it's BMX or entrepreneur and anything, just what do you want people to know about you? Man, um, going back, so I've, I've done it a whole lot in my life, but um, my biggest things is I was a professional BMX rider, basically all through my 20s, um, and then I got a bunch of injuries along the way, so I kind of had to figure out the entrepreneur thing, so I ended up starting a couple brands, and um, I sold one of the brands, and then I just started doing drop shipping. I ended up doing um, like $2.5 million in sales and like three years or something like that. And um, that's like long story short of like all the stuff I've got going on. I mean, there's, I could go on and on and on, but um, that's kind of like the, uh, the quick background of me, I guess. So what, so probably at least what people Google you or something, most people are going to run into your BMX background, right? Yeah. And um, I was rumored dating Taylor Swift for a little <laughs> bit, I think in 2000, man, maybe 2014 it was when her 1989 album came out so um, rumored rumored yes rumored yes rumored. Okay. we'll leave it at that we'll rumored it at dating. That. I, I think i told you this offline but uh i accidentally met her um before i joined the air force i joined the air force in 2007 it might have been that year summer that year or maybe the year before i don't know i'm from san jose california and she was doing a concert, I believe she's doing a concert there. This is like when she first started or something. I don't know. Um, right? Is that right? Around that time, late 2000s was when she started kind of? Yeah. Maybe catching like fame or something. I, so the crazy thing is, I don't know. Like I know her music, but I'm, I'm, I'm not like a full on Taylor Swift fan where I know like all of her songs like back to back and her whole career. But I do know. When I first stumbled upon her, I actually stumbled upon her on YouTube just as like a, like she would just make funny edits like that had nothing to do with her music. And so I just thought she was like a hilarious person. And, you know, that's, that's like kind of what I knew about her. And then I kind of listened to her music here and there. Right. You know? it's, it's, but she, I mean, dude, she's, she's killing it. She, she does it all. Yeah. Anyways, I, I just remember I was at Red Lobster. I was a server. I was like 20 or 19 or something. And like, Everyone's like, oh my God, Taylor Swift's at Taylor or at the table 33. And I'm like, I was like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> I, I did it. My favorite number. Uh, okay. So got it. So BMX. And so anyways, w w anything you want to talk about your BM your BMX career? Like, how did you get into that? Like, w what made you decide? Was this something you did growing up as a kid or a teenager? Like, how did you... How did you decide you want to get into pro BMX riding? Yeah, so I, I grew up in a farm town in Utah, and I just uh, I stayed home sick from school one time. I think I was like 12 maybe, and my mom rented me a movie called Rad, and it's like a movie about BMX riding, but it's like an actual movie movie that you can rent. Mm -hmm. And I watched that, and it's like totally from the 80s or early 90s or something like that. And I watched it and I was like, man, that like, you know, before that, before I even knew what trick biking was, I used to just play with like little motorcycles as a kid. And I'd always like, you know, act like I was doing like tricks on them, even though I didn't know it was a thing. It was just kind of like embedded in me. I don't know. And then after I watched that movie, I asked for a BMX bike for Christmas and I ended up getting one. And that's pretty much how it started. And then I would just build my own ramps, my own dirt jumps, like in, in the backyard and um and then long story short on that you know from like 12 to like 17 was when i first started getting my sponsors and then by 18 years old i was like traveling with you know some of the uh pros that i grew up idolizing like with their posters on my walls and stuff like that and then suddenly i'm like traveling with them matt hoffman is that his name yeah there's like matt hoffman there's yeah there's like i mean those are like the two main main ones that you're gonna 
you know, know in the in the BMX world. How old are you? I'm 35 years old now. Okay, so I'm 34. So that makes sense. We grew up in the same era because like BMX was blowing up when we were growing up, man. Yeah. yeah, like middle school, even a little bit before high school for sure. So that makes sense. You're part of that era. Like obviously video games were coming out about it and stuff too. I had a bike with pegs. <laughs> yeah, and we grew up without like the, the whole cell phone thing, you know? It's like right. we, I didn't get a cell phone until I was like, I think in eighth grade or something like that. But, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, if you're, if you're around the same age as me, you know, it's like you grew up where you're outside all the time. You're like putting planks of wood on a curb so you can jump it on your bike right. and, you know, just having fun playing night games with your friends. And that's what it's all about. It's crazy. I mean, it sounds, it sounds weird, but if you drive down the street, you like, you don't see kids anywhere. Like ever, no. like, like, it's crazy to think like we're kind of one of the last generations where it was like, go outside. I don't want to see you until it's dark. Like, don't yeah. be in the house. Like, exactly. And like, don't be glued to your phone. Cause if you think about it, so the way that I live my life, so, so the things that make me happy are cars and motorcycles. Now that I'm not like in the BMX world anymore, you know, I've kind of transitioned over to motorcycles, but then mm -hmm. cars are also like, as you can see, like I, I'm, Part of this car club called the garage 77 and the reason why i surrounded myself around this is because it's things that make me happy you know because if i didn't do things like this i would just sit at home and i'd be like on my phone or on my yeah. laptop and i do some work out of here too because i have access to this place 24 7 which is awesome it's like a nice little escape but when i'm not working i try to completely jump off of my phone my computer because like even though if you're not learning things and you're just you know just scrolling through social media. I mean, if you think about yeah. it, you're staring at like a black screen and yeah. that's doing nothing for you or your mental health. And it'll just start declining after a while. So I've had to relearn to like get out and go have fun, like go to the beach. Like I, so I'm in Redondo beach. The beach is like a block away from here. So, you know, when I'm not working, I'm either driving these cars or else I'm like chilling at the beach or I'm going for a hike, something completely away from mm -hmm. technology. But so, so after you kind of completed your BMX career, you said you got into like marketing, drop shipping, e-commerce, these kinds of things. These things are predominantly entirely done on the phone and on the laptop. So talk, talk to us just a little bit about how you got into that. And then also how do you manage to do online business if you're really trying to create a balance between being on the phone and online? So the balance kind of came after, after I was, uh, you know, so embedded in in technology and online and you know being on my laptop and phone all the time but towards the end of my bmx career um and and i'm not i wasn't like one of the top bmx riders by any means you know but towards the end i was like man i need to figure out a way to make a living because you know and like i've broken so many bones a lot of concussions and you know i was getting older so i was trying to figure out like I, i've always kind of had the entrepreneur side in me that just was waiting to get out because so i was always trying to think of ideas but um i invented this this uh company and this product called knot socks and it's a sock that it, it's like a shoe liner sock so you insert it inside of your shoe and then you stand on the sock rather than having to wear the sock and a lot of people that go to the beach go on vacations you know they they're always going sockless but when you're sweating in your shoes your shoes start to you know smell like vinegar and it's not good and so mm -hmm. Um, I was always going sockless and I was just trying to figure out how I can not wear a sock, but also make my shoes and feet not smell. And so, um, I looked into a lot of different things as like baby powders, all sorts of stuff, stuff that kind of worked, but also didn't. And then I learned how to sew and then I would basically cut fabric and sew it around my insole. And then I would cut it off after a while just to save, um, my shoes from getting like a bunch of sweat inside of it. And I realized that, you know, that didn't exist. So I basically sold my house at the time. Um, I was fortunate with like BMX and all that stuff where I was able to buy a house at like 20, I think I bought my, my house at like 20 years old. And then around like 25, I decided to sell the house in order to put money towards this new idea that I had. And I moved from Utah to California and found an investor. And then long story short, I got that product up and running, but while that was still going, I, I created 
or while it was still like growing, I created a clothing company called TTM Lifestyle, which is um, it's a huge clothing brand now. But I ended up selling the uh, clothing brand to the main um, the main couple on uh, Teen Mom on MTV. I think it's like Macy and Taylor or something like that. Mm-hmm. It was years ago when I sold it to them. But now my clothing line's like all over MTV. There's a whole retail store of it now. And so um, so I, I basically started that company to bring in income while I was building Not Socks. And now Not Socks is, is going, you know, we're sold worldwide. Um, we're currently sold out at the moment, which is awesome, thanks to TikTok, because a bunch of videos went viral on there. Um, but during that time as well, after I sold uh, TTM Lifestyle, and I still have Not Socks now, like I, I'm still running it, but I ran into the drop shipping model, which I learned about. Um, so I don't, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are kind of aware of drop shipping nowadays, but basically, um, to start your own brand, like I do, did with not socks, you have to order like a, a minimum of like 10,000 units. Mm-hmm. Because it's like your own product, but drop shipping, you can take a product that already exists and just put like a logo on it. And then you basically market it on Facebook ads, build a website around it. And if five customers order the product, you only have to buy five products. And then the manufacturer just sends it straight to the customer. So you don't even see the product. And so when I learned about that, I was like, oh, man, I was so used to having to fork up tens of thousands of dollars to get this like a business off the ground. Whereas this drop shipping model is something that I don't really have to invest a lot of money in I'll only time like building websites and you know coming up with a brand name logo. So I jumped into that and I did that for about two and a half years to three years and did about $2.5, $3 million in sales with that. But um, this is kind of getting to where I started to learn to get away from technology because I was spending, man, I was spending 12 to 14 hours a day on my laptop, just trying to like, you know, make everything perfect and, you know, basically make all these drop shipping businesses grow. And even though I was making, you know, a lot of money, my mental health was just completely declining. And, um, you know, I, I decided to take a step back because I wasn't doing the things that made me happy anymore. And even the stuff that I was, you know, like doing as a hobby before then, I didn't even care to do it anymore because I would be so yeah. mentally drained after, you know, being on my laptop on my phone all day that I just wanted to relax. And then when I relaxed, I would just go and sit on the couch and watch TV. So it was like, I was going from my computer screen to my phone screen to my TV screen. And there was nothing real about any of it, you know, and us as humans, <laughs> we need to like get out. We need to see trees, yeah. walk on grass. Like we need to get socialize, sun, socialize, even though Whoa. we're all but yeah, yeah, we need to get out a little bit. And, and it's funny, that's part of the reason I, I joined this this uh, car club. So even though like cars make me super happy, there's they're capped out here at 25 members. So I was like, you know what? I'm not social anymore. And I hadn't been social for years because after the BMX thing, I'd be around people 24 seven. So when that was done, I just wanted to be a hermit, which I did. I became a hermit for probably like four years five years, maybe longer than that, actually longer than that, you know, and other than like, you know, like whoever I was dating at the time, I have a wife now and all that, which, you know, she's obviously my best friend. She's, you know, the person I spend most of my time with. But outside of that, I was like, I need to socialize just a little bit. So I was like, this car club's awesome. There's only 25 members and maybe 5% of them or 10% of them actually come in. And as you can see, like, it's completely empty right now. I have a place to myself. So it's a perfect medium for an introvert like myself, you know, like it's fine if they come here and hang out, you know, I, and it's awesome to talk to them and get to know them, but also it's not overwhelming. Like there's not people here 24 seven. So it fits me perfectly. I think that's a awesome, great advice, honestly, for let's say, maybe I'll put that in the introverts are us book. That's some good advice on how to, uh, how some introverts, especially let's say those who may have, levels of social anxiety or shyness or whatever, or they're just more introverted, but they understand they need to socialize more. Maybe their mental health is deteriorating and they don't know how to kind of get started. Maybe, maybe that's some good advice to follow K 
Kenny's uh, path, and it's to join a small club, right? Yeah. Something around your interests. So you already have a level of familiarity. You already have a level of comfort with the topic at hand. Right. Or, or if you don't, you have that interest if you've never ex experienced whatever that is. And then since it's a small club, you're at least to some degree in the beginning, you're throttling the, your potential social interaction with people. So you're not maybe hopefully you're not overwhelmed too, too, too early or too quickly uh, with with people. But you can slowly start integrating into a community. And honestly, that's I think that's great, man. I, you know, I, I guess I've done that as well in some ways, like with jujitsu. I trained Brazilian jujitsu and stuff like that. Um but I think I should do that more. There's other things I'm interested in that I feel like maybe I should join clubs in. Like I want to learn the piano. I'm not a musician, but I'd love to learn the piano. I'd actually love to learn to sing. Um, maybe that's something I can do. And so maybe that's advice both of us can give to people is like you yeah. have your cars and, and bikes. I have like jujitsu and martial arts and stuff. Find that, that thing, whether you're into it already or not, get into some sort of club and it was gonna it could help a lot with with your mental health and, yeah uh, big time. and music's huge man so so when i was not touring for bmx you know i'd have a lot of time on my hands so i learned to play the guitar i learned to play the piano i learned to play drums i actually started out with drumming but i don't know what i would do without music like music is such a big part mm -hmm. of my life and and if you think about it like going clear back in humanity music was like always kind of there you know even even though all these crazy instruments that we have now aren't you know weren't there in the past but music was always kind of there but music's the only thing that can like make people really feel different emotions depending on what right. music they're listening to um but yeah i joined i joined a couple uh people in projects like one of the biggest ones it's like all over spotify it was like a few years ago but um i i met up with two other introverts you know mm -hmm. we're we're just all you know three introverts that were really into music and we uh went to my cabin in utah so I have a cabin kind of by Bryce Canyon. There's like no Wi-Fi, no cell phone service, no cable. It's just completely off grid. So we went there and we ended up writing like an EP, you know, three guitars and we had all three harmonize with each other. And the band is called Saunders Saloon. And it's it's S-O-N-D-E-R and then Saloon. And uh, we basically released it on Spotify thinking it wasn't really going to do anything. And all of a sudden it just like, blew up and we were like all of a sudden on commercials we were on tv shows um as backtracks we weren't like right. on like, playing live or anything yeah they like licensed that. your music yeah, right. we would license our music and people would just reach out to us and say hey your music's yeah. perfect for backtracks of like this commercial or mm -hmm. you know, this youtube channel or you know and we started getting royalty checks in the middle we were just like we didn't even try to like market this or anything but it was yeah it's funny because introverts kind of do things more from their soul, I guess. I mean, extroverts do too, but like, sure. introverts, they're they're big observers and they're big, uh, they're they're sensitive, if you will. You know, I don't know if that makes sense to you, and I'm sure it you know makes sense to a lot of introverts out there. But there, I feel like I feel like we're more sensitive than extroverts. And for us to write music in a place where we had no distractions, it was like we wrote music kind of completely like through our souls and. Um, it's very chill music. It's almost like rainy day coffee shop type, you know, oh, that's just cool. to sit and relax to. Like lo-fi? Yeah, kind of like lo-fi, but it's just like acoustic and uh, um, that's cool. with like kind of deep lyrics. And uh, and it just turned out great, man. And, and then we came back to L.A., recorded everything that we wrote. And um, man, we were like all of a sudden like in the capital, like the band Capital Cities, we were like in their studio and they were wanting to collab with us. Oh, I love capital cities yeah, like that. I mean, it was just nuts. And then like neon trees, like their guitar player reached out to us and you know, they were just like blown away that we didn't have a drummer or anything like that. And it was just like <laughs> still had a full sound and mm -hmm. it, was, it was really overwhelming. But at the end of the day, we we're introverts and we didn't really want to tour and we didn't want to like go do all like, it was just kind of too much too quickly. And so, we just kind of like would record songs here and there and then we just slowly let it fade out. But we haven't we haven't recorded music or played for man a couple of years now, but we still have I think like fifteen hundred monthly listeners on Spotify and it it's crazy. Yeah, that type of music does really well at Spotify, I feel like. I don't know. There's a lot of playlists of, of that 
kind of background music, chill music, lo-fi, mm -hmm. study music, lots of different ways to categorize it. Um, so I'm not surprised that you guys got you got some views on there. Are you thinking about doing more music or that you guys geographically dislocated or just really not together anymore or something? They're still here in LA, but the oh, okay. biggest change is like, we're all married now, whereas before we weren't, you know, we were just like all single guys kind of mm -hmm. hanging out. And so now that we're married, you know, we obviously mm -hmm. get our work done with what we have to make a living. And then when we're right. done at the end of the day, we're spending that time with our wives, but we talk, we're, I mean, we're still in communication all the time and we're thinking about it because we still get comments all the time of, of fans like saying like, when are you guys going to release more music? And when are you guys going to come to my city and tour and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I don't know if we'll actually tour it or yeah. anything like that, but we might, we might actually end up, you know, releasing like maybe one or two songs like every three months or so. Just see how it goes. You know, something that could be cool. I don't know if you've seen this, but I subscribe to like, five or six uh youtube channels and they're like lo-fi all the different types of things we discussed and they're youtube channels that are permanently live have you yeah, seen I, I actually so every single morning i actually listen to one it's i forget what it's called but it's like morning jazz because okay. i love jazz music just like for when i wake up and it just kind of uh -huh. gets going and and like the wallpaper is like this like steaming cup of coffee it's like yeah perfect. yes perfect. and so um but it, yeah it's live 24 7 and then when i when i leave the house um and if my wife's not there so she's a professional figure skater so she's always at the ice rink mm -hmm. and so we have two dogs and instead of them sitting in silence i always put on those live youtube mm. music have you thought about creating one for your guys music thought about it but i don't know I, what the effort is we i i don't really totally understand how it works but i think we have like I don't know, 10 songs, 15 songs, okay. but they would just have to repeat themselves. Or like it go through yeah. the team and then repeat. Yeah. But I actually thought about doing something like that just for side income, like slowly building a YouTube channel of like mm -hmm. jazz or lo-fi beats or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how it works. I kind of looked into it, but I don't understand how you can get like tracks to play back to back to back with like, you know, a live, wallpaper that's like moving that's like forever going uh, yeah i i don't know i could speculate i think i could probably speculate very accurately on how they do it but i'm not entirely sure either i'm sure i'm sure you can just create a playlist and then put it on uh, infinite loop and whatever or something like yeah. that but well if any of the listeners know how to do it yeah. comment below and, and let us yeah. know yeah i don't know i think that'd be cool i i I, I follow a few of those and it sounds like maybe your music could be cool with that. You might even be able to find a way to throw in a whole bunch of like license free music. So it's yeah. not just your 10 songs. So you have like a longer playlist and you're just sprinkling yours in on there. Something you curated. I don't know, bro, but it's like most of them get like millions of plays. And so, you yeah. know, with that being said, like you'd have to be able to like, as the creator of that, you'd be making good money, you know? Yeah. Well, one of the ones I follow again, I don't know how they do it. It has a ticker on like the top left of the screen and, and it has donations. So people are donating in real time to keep the channel going. And I don't know how, but when they donate, it automatically dynamically puts their name and their donation amount up on the top and says, thank you. So I'm like, Oh, that's really cool. This guy's clearly, it's like, you know, two bucks, five bucks, one buck or whatever, but I'm sure it adds up. I was like, Oh, that's pretty cool. That's a smart idea. That is a really smart idea. And that's the key to everything right now, man, is like, you gotta like, from, from all my experience with working and, you know, it's like, even though I've done really well in, in sales and all that stuff, this last year I've completely stepped away from almost everything to, kind of fix my mental health and to where I'd be like in a state of like happiness again, rather than like worried all the time and anxiety, which mm -hmm. being around technology and all that stuff brings it out in you. But like automating something that makes you money. Yeah. Is like the number one key. And that's what we're all trying to figure out. You know, yeah. something that, I mean, there's people that have YouTube channels that are making 500 grand to a million dollars a year that are almost completely automated. And then they have, free time to go do whatever they want and and your free time and doing things that don't even cost money like yeah you do a scenic place like and believe me when i say it because i've like done everything like from the pro athlete thing owning a house owning multiple cars you know i get to drive this ferrari behind me anytime i want but what it comes down to is like 
sitting at a scenic place and just relaxing you're not spending money but you're just like observing and just like really taking things in in the moment like that is priceless like that's where it's at and no amount of money could ever pay for that but like if you're able to do that whether you're broke or rich like those are the true riches in the world and they i mean 100 percent, they are it's crazy peace of mind is the you know i i think i think in different ways and there's really no reason to quantify it we've both had very successful careers that have made us decent money. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we both have a shared experience that the, at least for us, we can't talk about everyone, but at least for us, the money didn't make us any happier. No. Um, and in some cases, again, we'll just speak for our experiences. Money is not an enemy. That's for damn sure. It definitely is an ally, but um, how you get it, the lifestyle that you have to, sacrifice to get it and to get whatever the number is that you feel like you need that's where the problem can arise is if you're living for all, both of our experiences living on your phone and your computer and tvs and all this stuff you realize after years generally you look back and you go man it wasn't even worth it like i'm not mad i made the money it's a good experience and i got a good skills and all this but like honestly if i could do it again i probably would do it differently even if i made less because uh, I feel like, I feel like those years, um, I, you know, I just went into a darker place that I, I didn't feel like myself, my yeah. physical health sacrifice, mental health sacrifice. I wasn't happy. I wasn't doing the hobbies I love. I wasn't social. And it was just like, just cause I was in this grind. And I think both of us kind of were doing this e-commerce thing around the same time too. I mean, I'm, I'm in from, I'm from social media marketing. I wasn't really doing the drop shipping stuff you're talking about though. Me and you may be doing some of this together, but, uh, I living on social media, which to some degree I, I do less of now, which I'm happy about. Cause it's not my job. I'm back in air force, but because of introverts are us and stuff, I still am really all over it. Um, I think living on social media increasingly is a horrific thing to do, but yep when you and I, I think started quite a few years ago. Um, and, and even now there's this whole culture that popped up of this, this entrepreneur culture. I'll let be honest, it, Gary Vee and certain type of people who just really made it super sexy and it's cool. And you gotta be an entrepreneur. You gotta grind. You gotta outwork everyone. Don't sleep. You gotta, you know, every, you know, focusing on all the numbers and profit and just did whatever this like, what, what do they call it? Like a uh, hustler porn. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like a, a fake guru, you know? And that, and that's one thing that makes me like cringe when I get on social media, like TikTok or anything. Like all you see is like, this is how I made $5 million in the first year doing Amazon, you know, and, and uh, like all that stuff. And it's funny. Cause like, I actually, before all that stuff kind of came out. So I made a course for, for e-commerce and drop shipping and what I do but I never advertised it. I was just like, I will never be that dude. Yeah. It's like, yo, check out, you know, this is how I did this, this is how, you know, it's like, I don't want to be that guy. And, you know, I know there's money in it and I could make a, I could make a killing trying to hawk my course, but I don't, you know, and I don't even really pay attention to the course at all anymore. I don't even really sell it because I, I just don't want to come across as that type of person. Yeah. I'm not that type of person, but there's people that are money hungry and they do make a lot of money, but like their souls are completely like mm -hmm. whack and unhappy because all they're chasing are these material things. And like, yeah, like you said, money, money is a good thing because like it's freedom notes, gives you the freedom and makes, it gives you like, you know, a way to navigate life easier, yeah. like paying bills and stuff like that. But if you get obsessed with it, where it runs your life and you're not like doing things that are true to yourself, then you're going to be miserable. And that, and that's kind of why, I stepped away, you know, cause it was like, I, I mean, I still do stuff here and there, but I try and like work 50% of the time. And then the other 50% is just me time, you know, and, and nobody can take that. So, so what I do now mostly is like, you know, I'll take calls. Like I charge like $200 an hour to teach people e-commerce like face to face. Cause I'd rather do it face to face than like have them buy a course or whatever. Yeah. But I only accept three calls a day. You know, I could be doing like nine calls a day and make a bunch of money but three calls a day, which is three hours of my time. Yeah. And then the rest of the time, you know, I, I just do what I want. And that, that's like more priceless to me than like making the money of taking those three calls, you know? 
And right. I didn't get burnt out on it either. Because if I was doing like six to nine calls a day, I'd absolutely hate what I what I'd be doing. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. It's too much of a good thing. The, again, it all not everyone, but you can have too much of a good thing, uh, and then you get burned out by it. Uh, and and the burnout is, is is dangerous. It's really dangerous. And uh, I, you know, I think I think what you've realized to use a marketing term, analogy, is like the return on investment um, f- between three calls a day for you, whatever it is, and nine. The return on investment is actually lower after you go after three. When people think, "What? You could make double the money in a day, or whatever, triple the money if you go up to nine. How is the return on investment lower? That makes no sense. Well. The return on investment is lower if your metric for success is just money. Yeah. But if your metric for success is whatever, relax, relaxation or mental well-being or just positivity or energy and whatever it is, that's the thing that people need to realize and something I realized too, obviously coming from marketing the last six years before I came back into the Air Force was I really realized like in marketing how we, how we, we organize marketing campaigns around an objective. What that KPI is, that key performance indicator, everything is designed for that outcome. Well, generally in marketing, that outcome is something that revolves around profit. Of course, you got to run a business. I get it. And you need to do that. But if you if your own personal KPIs or your, the, your own personal metric for success is just money and you optimize all of your behaviors for money, you probably will do well off in life, probably. But your other types of metrics in your life, happiness and fulfillment and well-being and all these other things, probably not probably is certainly going to suffer dramatically. And if you actually care about those things, you're going to be incredibly unhappy. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, I've got friends that are making millions of dollars and yeah, like people look at them like, Oh, I wish I was them. I wish I had their lifestyle. But when you get to know them, they're like the most sad people <laughs> I mean, i'm not gonna name any names yeah. no yeah. but like they're just so unhappy and their their life's completely out of whack they're they're constantly searching for meaning you know and and then when they get bummed out they just go out and they go shopping and buy like a louis vuitton whatever mm-hmm. and then they're happy for like five days because they feel confident with their new like shirt or whatever they bought You're right but in reality like when they're walking down the street with their new louis vuitton shirt you know, or like their new sneakers, like in their own mental mindset, they think everybody's looking at them like, oh, that guy's got like a nice shirt on. But in reality, nobody knows that they just bought that. Like nobody knows that like, like he could have had that shirt or those shoes for months, you know, but Mm -hmm. like his head, since it's something new, like that's what he bases or her, he or her, you know, that's like what they base their, their like happiness and value on. And that's not real. Like that stuff is just like, it's not real. And even with cars, like, so the reason why I joined this car club is because I love vintage old cars. Like I don't really like modern brand new type cars. Like, like the car behind me is a 1987 Ferrari 328. And I've always loved this car because, you know, when I was younger, my grandparents used to watch Magnum PI all the time. And that's like, that's the car in it. And so, you know, I was like, I'd way rather drive something like that than like a brand new modern, you know, modern car. And, you know, that like, that's happiness to me. And it's not, it's not because it's a Ferrari. It's because it's something I grew up, you yeah. know, watching as a kid and it just, it just brings happiness to my soul. But, you know, long story short on that, like you, you just got to get the materials like out of your, out of your mind, you know, especially like with clothing and the next big, you know, yeah. next big designer, whatever it is, because it's going to be not cool anymore three months down the road. And then you're going to have to spend another, ton of money on the next cool designer piece that you think gives you value to your life, but it doesn't. Yeah, that's a tough one uh, for sure that I think, I don't know if it's, it's, it's many factors. It's capitalism, it's peer pressure. um, It's um, I don't know, just self-esteem, lots of different factors kind of make us buy things and whatever to fill a void or to feel accepted in certain communities and stuff like that. And I think we're all, we all give into it to a certain degree that's somewhat unavoidable, but I think you bring up a good point of just maybe trying to remind ourselves sometimes what we're, what we're doing it for. And is it actually sustainable? Is it worthwhile? 
uh, for our mental health or is it just something, you know, we, we do to just cover something up? Yeah. And, and I mean, like, you know, there, there are a lot of people that have like the designer thing as a hobby. And if it make if it truly makes you happy, go for it. Like I'm, I'm not against anything that makes a person happy, but a lot of people are doing it to impress other people that they don't even know. That's like, yeah. that's the biggest issue. Um, and then, you know, they're spending their hard earned money, like their full paycheck on like a t-shirt, you know? And that's like, you know, you could be spending that money on an experience. Like you could go mm -hmm. on a cruise, you could go fly somewhere and go somewhere you've never been before and take in the memories of like, you know, something that you can carry to your deathbed one day, you know, when you're like, I, I what I always do is I always imagine myself like old and tired and I, I don't want to do anything anymore. The only things that are going to make me happy are the memories that yep. I built. And that's why I've kind of chosen the lifestyle I do now yeah. because the memories are what are what we take and the memories are what we have in the end. Right. And um, we won't touch on this too much, but part of the reason I have that mentality is because I've had um, like five close friends pass away just randomly from like freak accidents and just stuff like that. And it made me realize that no matter what you're trying to build in your life, if it's just money or whatever, like life can just end like that. You know, yep. and if, you, if you're sitting in front of a computer trying to make money, you know, 14 hours a day, like I used to, you know, it's like, that's not a life because like my life could have ended from, from a freak accident. And all I did for the last two years was sit in front of a computer, you know, and yep. that's not a way to live. And so, you know, even, even looking at Steve jobs, man, like when he, you know, had cancer and all that stuff. He, you know, he was one of the richest guys in the world. And he said that, you know, money, like straight up when he was sick, he just said, you know, like money's not everything. He wished he didn't work so hard, you know, it's like, sure. He changed the entire world with a yeah. lot of stuff he did, which is great. Um, but you know, it's like, I'm sure towards the end, you just kind of wish that you lived the life that's kind of true to yourself. Yeah, man, I, I, I happen to share that mentality, especially as I'm getting older too, where I'm like, you start having family and friends and acquaintances pass away. And you're like, holy shit, like, man, like this does, there is nothing guaranteed here. This could, this could end for any of us any day. Um, and like kind of the acknowledgement, the fear of your own mortality and those around you, it's like, man, like none of this shit matters other than experiences, to be honest with you. None of these physical belongings matter. And I feel the same way too. I mean, I have a few nice things that I'm like, whatever, they're for me. But I, as I'm getting older, I'm always like, all right, even as an introvert, and this is, I get a lot of pushback from introverts on introverts or us when I say things like this, but I don't care. I'm, I'm solid in my, 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 my advice and my belief we need more experiences, particularly introverts. Yep. Now, what 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 I'm not saying is these experiences have to, have to be the idealized extrovert experience or in a big crowd or in a big noisy, bright, crazy. I'm not saying what the experience has to be, but what you said is true. Just sitting home all the time isn't the experience either, but I'm not villainizing that. I also think sitting at home in your case, like with your wife watching a movie, having a glass of wine, that's a dope experience too. There's value in that. Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts of my day is when I get to go home, you know, eat dinner, have a glass of wine with my wife and we'll watch like Netflix shows and stuff like that. And like, and I know Gary Vee, you know, those people are like, you know, if you're sitting home watching TV, if you're, you know, if you're watching TV all day, you need to change it up. But like, yeah. yeah, get the Netflix series shows, you know, watch them at yeah. night from 6 p.m. on. Do whatever you want to do as far as like watching Netflix series, play music, whatever you want to do. But as far as the experiences, yeah, man, like I do not step foot in bars ever. I will not go to clubs. I will not go to like those loud like I'm at the, I'm at the age where loud noises just like make me mad. You know, it's like it just kind of fuels me a little bit and it, I just can't. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. And I just can't do it. Like, so what I do for experiences is like, I'll literally just drive to like a cool spot on the ocean. I know a lot of people don't have oceans, but you have mountains and I also love mountains, but I'll just drive to a cool spot that has scenery and I'll just be completely by myself and I'll just sit there and I'll have a cup of coffee yeah. and I'll, I'll literally sit there for two hours 
you know, maybe even longer than that sometimes. And I'll just take it in, just live in the moment, just take it in and like, you know, get into a deep level of thought, like look at a tree and just understand that the tree you're looking at, you know, is probably like 40 years old. And, you know, it, like everything like has to grow with time. And that, I mean, like there's so much stuff that we could get into like deeply where yeah. people will probably think we're smoking crack, you know, because you get yeah. into such a deep, a deep thought, but that's the stuff that matters. And like, and then you start to learn that, you know, everyone right now, they're trying to race and, and hurry and hurry and hurry. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand like nature grows everything and it naturally grows with time and, and, and it never hurries, but yet everything is accomplished. And that's the way we need to kind of live our lives. No, I appreciate that, man, because I, I'm, I'm from the Bay Area, San Jose, Silicon Valley. I've lived in, you know, the, the big cities, the crowds, the hustle bustle, like that was my life, man. And what I've, you know, started to become and believe now as I've gotten older and had the experiences we've discussed, burnout and all this kind type of stuff, I've prioritized and I'm thinking about, I'm in Texas right now for some, some Air Force training. But after that, I'm really thinking about moving somewhere else that has more nature, whether it's on the beach or the mountains. I think it's gonna be one of the two, like you suggested, even though I didn't grow up in the beach or the mountains, I know just like in my soul, I need to be around those things because I actually feel like it's an antidote for the craziness of whatever our job is or whatever you're in a city. I actually don't think there's any problem with be doing the social media, doing some hustling stuff, being in a city, all that, but you need refuge somewhere to reset and to kind of cleanse your mental health and your thoughts and all that stuff. And I think, I think being in the beach and the mountains and whatnot and nature is the best way to do that. And I haven't done that in my life. So I'm really trying to figure out over these next six, seven months or whatever, where I want to potentially relocate to, because I, I feel like I just need to for my soul and my, my mental health or whatever. I need to be somewhere either, at those locations like beach or mountains or very close so i can conveniently go kind of just disconnect for periods of time and and yeah. just be one with nature i guess yeah like i mean our souls like you have to look at your soul as like a battery you know it gets drained and and us as introverts like we all know that very well you know you go out one time in front of a crowd of 20 people and you need like three days <laughs> to like, charge again yeah. but but yeah like so, so for example, you know, I used to live downtown Los Angeles, like 31 stories up. I had one of the best views of the city. Um, you know, I was paying way too much money for rent, but it was like <laughs> a bucket list thing I wanted to check off. Yeah. Um, yeah. When we first started like talking, I, I was living there and you, you saw the views and all that stuff. Yeah. But it was like, after a while, man, I was like so unhappy. You know, I was like in this luxury high rise that, almost every single person on the face of the planet would love to live in. But like after a while, like, you know, when I'm looking out the window, I don't see anything with nature. I just see concrete buildings, mm -hmm. skyscrapers, helicopters, hear sirens <laughs> constantly. There's GTA like views, GTA views, which, you know, I started that, that TikTok GTA yeah. views reality, which is awesome from, from that apartment. But what it came down to was like, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm spending so much money for this place. And like, it was awesome for the first year, but now it's like, I wake up miserable. You know, I, I yeah. open my blinds to just like, it's, it's no longer like this breathtaking city view. It's like mm -hmm. oh, concrete. Like I need to, I need to get in the mountains. I need to go to the ocean today. And so I talked to my wife and I was like, babe, like, I know we're going to downsize, but you know, I like, let's move to the beach. Let's move, let's move closer to the beach, closer to yeah. trees. The dogs will even be happy because there's no grass downtown for them to, go to the bathroom on or anything like that we no longer have to go in and like up and down a, a elevator 31 stories just to take the dogs out right so we ended up moving to the beach we're saving like two thousand dollars a month in rent and we completely downsized from a two bedroom to a one bedroom we got rid of like two car loads of crap that we don't even use and dude i'm not like like for 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 a long like for the first time in a long time I was completely happy and content and I still am, you know, like moving to the beach was the best thing that I could have ever done. And Damn. that what came about this car club that I, that I joined and that bring on a lot of happiness in my life. But man, I'm just like a couple miles from the beach, go for a short little drive, 
and I just chill on the sand and think, and it's amazing. Dude, I need to follow your lead. And so kind of around the same period of time, maybe a little bit before we met, in 2019, I was uh, living in San Francisco. I moved to San Francisco, and I lived in a high-rise, and I was paying 4000 a month yeah, we were for like one bedroom. A month for a, a two-bedroom. But yeah, one bedroom. You got me there. It, I, it's the same thing, though, man. I, I, after After six months, bro, I was like, I'm leaving. I was just like... I mean, it, w it was something I wanted to do. I did it, but I didn't. I didn't think how quickly it would get old. Yeah. Um. And after six months, I was like, "All right, I'm bouncing," and yeah. I broke my lease. Um, and and I moved. But it's the same thing. I was just like, ah, maybe I don't know. Maybe if I was younger or something, I would have put up with it more or whatever. I don't know. But I was just like, same thing. I was like, bro, like, why am I paying this much? I look outside and I just see buildings. I see like. Yeah people shitting like what i don't yep. understand this like exactly follow your lead bro because i've had a couple friends as well one of my good friends he's a former ufc fighter so he was in he was in las vegas living there and then he just moved to san diego and i was like "Ooh, don't tempt me bro i, I know san diego can be expensive but i was like I, I don't know. I might need to move to San Diego or something. I don't know because I just can't live in the valley anymore or in like a big city. I don't want to say I can't. I can, but it's just like I'm really tempted to make a move like that. Yeah, definitely, man. And I mean, the, the apartment that we live in now, you know, it's like the whole inside of the apartment. Like, so, so there's like apartments on both sides, but in the center, it's just all trees. And there's like, there's like a pool, but there's like palm trees. There's like fire pit you know, surrounded in palm trees. And that like, that's, that's where it's at for me. You know, I can wake up and hear birds chirping in the morning and I literally will go outside and I'll just like hold a leaf. Like I'll literally like grab a leaf and I'll just stand there. Like, <laughs> people probably think like I'm like nuts, but I'll like have my coffee and I'll just hold a leaf for like, you know, 30 seconds just to kind of like, oh, uh, like almost get the energy from like something natural, you know, and something from nature. And I mean, that alone is like, you know, priceless to me. And it's way better than that, like skyscraper thing that we both, you know, lived through. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like everyone, everyone lives for those awe moments. And that's what, that's really what life is all about. Like those awe moments. Like when you go to the Grand Canyon for the first time, or you mm -hmm. go into a skyscraper and open the blinds for the first time, it's like, it's an awe moment. And you think that, um, that that's like what it's all about and and it is but you just got to take it in in increments but like if you've been living there for like a year that all moment is gone now you know uh yeah so i mean i feel like i don't know like introverts like i feel like a lot of them don't want to be in a lot of hustle and bustle and that's part of the problem is it seems like a lot of jobs require you to be part of a hustle bustle in the city but something changed that and that was COVID, i guess in some ways is now that's like so much more acceptable to like work in a remote job or something too which i will say honestly has disadvantages so that's something i want to also kind of bring up to people is i think there's it's a great opportunity now for people to live where they want because yeah. there's so many jobs that you can work from home now um, because the culture has changed. Col COVID has probably permanently changed that, at least in many ways. Yeah. Uh, not every company, but a lot of companies are going to be very open to that because let's just be honest, companies are self-interested too and they save money with that. Mm -hmm. But one thing I would like to say is – earlier in, in the podcast, I said, you can have too much of a good thing. So I was working at a marketing agency before I came back into the Air Force for four years. And I was remote the entire time. This is pre COVID. And the last like, honestly, like two years, increasingly, I got really like depressed. And like, just, I just, I had I, my mental health suffered, because I was home by myself all the time disconnected from all of our employees who are in Canada. So, and I was in senior leadership, it was a problem, man. And I realized every person's got to make their own decision, but 
as an introvert, maybe even some extroverts, extroverts really want to be around people. Introverts yeah. think, oh, I don't need to be around people. That's cool. It's perfect. Work from home, remote. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just say in my experience, you can have too much of a good thing. You still need to see some people. You still need to develop relationships with coworkers or go do your routine. Even if it's not at your house, have a routine every morning, go to the coffee shop and get your coffee, do a walk or something like that. This is something that really I get a lot of pushback from introverts all the time. When I say this, you need to socialize. If yeah. you're antisocial, that is not an, an introvert. That yeah. is a mental health disorder. And I mean, like, not, and, and when we say socialize, like, don't go to like clubs and bars. That's way too yeah. much for most people, but like, sure. Just socialize with a couple people, you know? But, mm -hmm. but it, the funny thing is that we learned from COVID is too much of a good thing is still not, you know, it's still not happiness. Like, for example, when COVID first hit, everybody was like, oh, sweet, I get to stay home and watch Netflix all day now. And like, <laughs> it was this thing that everyone was excited about. Yeah. And after like, you know, three three months of that everybody's pretty much watched everything on netflix and they're they're going stir crazy and they're you know it's like yeah they're not happy about it anymore so it went from like something that everyone was kind of excited about like minus the whole plague virus whatever it was right like staying home you know it's like everyone was like oh finally i get this break and i get to just do nothing all day <laughs> and, and you know everything's fine but then everyone started going stir crazy. Everyone started like yeah. needing to go outside. But that just shows you like no matter what you have, like what whether you live in like a giant mansion house and, you know, you have everything you could want in there, you still need to get outside. And yeah. that's what I'm saying, like kind of backtracking what we were talking about, you know, whether how much money you have going outside and just being in, you know, the sun or just being at a, a cool viewing spot. Like that is like what life is truly all about and living in the moment. You know, that's something that will never get old. Like literally it will never get old, but like staying inside, even in your awesome mansion, in yeah. your awesome house, driving your awesome supercars, the material things, they'll get old. Like after a while, it's just like, oh, like I need something else. But when anybody wants to get refreshed, what you were talking about, like when they need that mental reset, go into the mountains, go into nature, you know, sit at that cool little spot and just chill and then that's when that mental reset happens and that's literally like what it's all about oh man i couldn't couldn't say it any better than that you know nature some socialization like just get out we gotta do it man and and i i gotta take my own advice too it's very hard for me uh to do it sometimes i'm not i'm not great at it you know i whatever for many reasons whether you know introversion a little bit social anxiety a little bit whatever it is uh their excuses at the end of the day we gotta we gotta just do better at it do you have any other any other kind of closing advice for or i don't know whatever it doesn't have to be advice specifically or experiences you want to you want to kind of depart on that especially introverts or not but maybe specifically introverts can benefit from because look you you you've had your 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 share of success and you've had your ups and downs in life and that's really ultimately what I want people to take away from this is to walk away with this and be like okay uh that's helpful there's some utility in this podcast yeah. as well so what i would say is you know mental health is the number one thing and then when it comes to socializing you know, people overthink that. They think that they have to like hit up a friend and cause it's annoying to be like, Hey, meet me at this coffee shop at five. <laughs> and then, and then you yeah. feel like you have to entertain each other. Like mm -hmm. that's kind of socializing, but what you can do is like, even if you're shy or not, just when you're at a store and you see somebody with like a cool outfit on or like a cool car or, or whatever, mm -hmm. just, just be like, Hey, like I love those shoes or whatnot. And it makes them feel good, but it also makes you feel good yeah. because you kind of socialize with them. And just those little spurts of socializing is enough. Like that's all you need to do. So you don't need to like, you know, be meeting friends and, you know, have this whole awkward get together and you don't know when you should end it. You know, it's like yeah. whatever you want to do. And that's kind of for the more extreme, like, you know, introverts. But mm -hmm. um, as far as like ending notes, um, you know, if you want to follow what I'm doing, you know, I've got my Instagram at Kenny B. Sanders. Um, you can get a hold of me there if you want to you know, learn anything with e-commerce or even mental health. I actually take a lot of calls. So, so the calls that I do for 200 an hour, 
half of them are for e-commerce and the other half are actually for mental health. And it's like, you know, I kind of guide them on kind of finding their happiness and what they should do. Because once you find that, then that's when your definite purpose and your way to make money will start to come to light, you know? Because if you're, if you don't have that and you're miserable and you're just trying to like chase the money, the dollar bill, no matter what you do, you're going to be unhappy. Um, and I've, I've got a lot of exciting things coming up here soon. Um, so, so I told you like my other happiness is motorcycles. And so the last year I've spent, um, a lot of money and time, but I built my own motorcycle brand and I'm going to be releasing it here in the next month or so. Oh, um, sure. it's like a vintage old, like kind of like an older vintage cafe racer style motorcycle, but it's completely electric. Okay. And so, um, the people that want to ride motorcycles that are scared of like clutches and shifting, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's for them because there's just front brake, back brake, and there's no shifting. There's nothing like that, but yet you're on like a really cool cafe racer, but the company's called old Soren motorcycle co. Um, it's going to be released in about a month. So follow the okay. Instagram if you want to check those out, but all in all, you know, just, uh, I guess ending notes, find whatever makes you happy, whether it makes you money or not and do it. Yeah. yeah I appreciate that. And when, when you get some content up on the motorcycle brand, let me know. I could share it in the stories of introverts are us and stuff. I always try to try to use my Instagram stories to promote other introverts doing stuff. You, you'll see me post people's music. Like a lot of strangely, a lot of famous musicians follow me, even though I don't know who they are. They're famous to other people and I'll just share their stuff. And they're like, Holy crap. Like, you don't have to do that. You, and I'm like, I don't even really listen to their stuff necessarily. I'm like, no, I'm just want to do it. So I just like, I like, I want to put, I want to put introverts on. I want to put them on. I want to use my platform to promote people. So let me know when that gets launched. And yep. another thing we should do is if you're interested, we should do an Instagram live. If you want to yep. do Instagram lives, I'd love to That'd be a good way for people to connect with your account too. And we could talk about mental health stuff on there. We can actually do live streams, right? Split screen. So yeah, I'd love to. So let's talk about that sometime. But uh, Kenny, thanks so much, man. I really appreciate you doing this podcast, being an awesome introvert, sharing your wisdom, your experience, your advice with everyone. Thanks so much, man. Of course. Thanks, guys.